I got inspired by my favorite internet meme and a nostalgic souvenir from my childhood and I decided to create an artwork around it this week. Hello, my name is Shelby and I'm a potter. I found this bulk lot of slip casting molds and one by one I'm pouring them up to reveal whatever is inside and then finish it into an artwork. This is the Mystery Mold series, so let's see what's in today's episode. A very satisfying pour with the six symmetrical holes. I let this one go and I don't tip it out as it looks too small to be hollow. It's time to open this one with the six holes. It actually kind of looks like a domino. <gasps> They're little tiles. I am really excited about that. Like this seems really simple and basic, but I have so many ideas on to use these. Not only can I make my own bathroom tiles now or kitchen tiles or splashback, but these could be great little magnets, brooches, badges. Like these are gonna shrink a little bit still. This is a great mold. I am really, really happy with this. I can't wait to start painting them. Here is a look at the mold for those looking to acquire it into their collection. This mold is really satisfying. All the tiles are so symmetrical and the little nubs just sliced right off and then popped right out I really loved popping them out. It was so fun. So for the first half of this video, let's talk about memes This is not the only artwork I did this week But this one was probably the most satisfying and then I'll talk about the other artworks So when I was looking at the tiles I was thinking how cool it would be to create this large image of all the little tiles making up a component of the picture Like a big tile puzzle or pixels comprising an image now I could have gone wild and done each little tile a pixel but I feel like that would be a year-long project right there and fill up my whole studio so instead I broke the image down to a 4x4 tile grid. I asked on socials which meme I should use and I got so many different suggestions. I also learned that so many memes have now been affiliated with certain political groups which is kind of sad. That's a rabbit hole I haven't actually gone down yet but I feel so sad for the original artists that have perhaps made this cute little goofy image to share online but are now being associated with this certain groups that don't align with their values. One for example was the Peppy the Frog which I was going to use and I have been told that the Feels Good Man the documentary goes into more detail about the artist and the way their artwork was adopted by some dark political groups. I have been told that the Feels Good Man the documentary goes into more detail about the artist and the way their cute little frog artwork was adopted by some dark political groups and how they're actually trying to reclaim its name back. Maybe I should have done it to reclaim Peppy back, but just in case it does serve as pain and frustration, I wanted to keep it light for the artwork this week. One meme I use so much is the this is fine meme. And this meme depicts a dog sitting on a table with a cuppa. Around the pooch, the room is on fire, but the doggo looks like kind of content and fine, and that at least they aren't on fire yet. Sounds pretty brutal when you think about it, but this meme just feels relatable to those moments when everything around you it feels like chaos but one little portion of life you still have under control so you find some sense of content in that or that moment of just being aware that everything is out of control and trying your best to just keep it calm and keep it together it kind of has a bunch of meanings and is just so relatable and i am also aware that many of you are so aware of this meme but i wanted to explain it for those who maybe haven't seen it or not a part of meme culture memes are sort of used as like little graphic images that speak for a feeling emotion or experience people share them online to engage in humor or question something or to convey a message etc for those that don't really understand memes I love them and I think they speak louder than words sometimes so the this is fine doggo from Casey Green had to be my top choice after finding out what had happened to Peppy the frog over in the US I also thought this choice was amazing because the tiles would be going into a fire room of their own when they enter the kiln and I just thought for that like connection it was just so worth doing I also just wanted to let you all know that I actually contacted Casey Green before doing this project and they were so kind and said that I could do this with credit to them. So I have linked their shop in the caption below. Please make sure that if you are wanting to own a meme or any kind of merch related to a meme that you support the original artist. Casey has a bunch of different pieces like their pins, which I so, so want, but make sure you're supporting them and not the people that are recreating their work and profiting off of it just as a little tidbit <laughs> but I wanted to use this time to say thank you to Casey for not only creating a very relatable artwork that relates to so many of us but for giving me permission to do this project because it literally absolutely made this week's reveal so worth it 
So in order to map out the design, I printed the meme out as big as I could and put it into a square format. I thought it would be effective and easy to recreate this way. I then cut the meme out into the same four by four square grid and used the grid sketching method to map out each individual tile. This is actually such a helpful and good technique if you're ever wanting to recreate something. It breaks it down into lines and shapes and it allows you to see each component individually so you can get an exact copy of whatever you are creating. It's a great way to blow up an artwork as well into a bigger format, but it just meant that I could easily recreate the design and break it down without getting confused by all the little parts that connect together. This is also taking me back to morning cereal days when I was a kid. They used to have these little grid images to copy on the back of the cereal boxes. Once I had sketched it out and I was fairly happy with the layout and positioning, I started adding my colors and most of the colors were custom mixed and I was kind of guessing and hoping they would look like the memes colors, but some colors are hard with underglaze due to the high temps and they can burn out. So I'm just going for the best shot possible. Also just wanted to share that I was having some weird tech stuff happening this week. I lost a bunch of files of filming this one and I couldn't believe it of all the pieces I lost was the one off artwork I was doing of this meme tile, but then I had a few other weird tech stuff happening and it was just feeling a little bit cursed but we got through in the end I actually refilmed some of those shots and mocked up some fake tiles that aren't actually the ones in that original grid but you, you get the point okay I, just, I did it for you guys to make sure that you get to see the storyline and the process of it building up I did however manage to still get all my line work shots they all worked fine so I was so grateful for that trying to line up all the tiles was a little tricky and some of the tiles are not perfectly symmetrical However, this is, was not a huge issue. I figured once it's on a wall and with grout in between, it will line up amazingly. I did try to line it up the best I could by having it on the flat lay, but then also painting over the curb of the edge so that it looked like it was a clean line. The line didn't just stop. Because all the colors were custom mixed, the artwork it took me hours. It actually took me about two days between mapping it out, under glazing, laying it out, you know, everything. It was just a really long project. To lose the footage, I was devastated, but it's fine we got there and I was just praying that with the line work I didn't muck up because if I mucked up I would have to try and figure out all the custom color mixes again because they dried out once I worked through the whole image and I want to make sure that I didn't line it up until all the color was on just because I felt like it would be easy to just line it all at once. I then moved on to some more project with these tiles and I wanted to try so many ideas because it's such a blank canvas but you can do so much with these little squares. I wanted to convey my picture idea again but with a general illustration and not a meme so you can just visualize how it would look with any kind of generic design as a tile artwork. For the individual tiles I wanted to place a magnet on the back and turn them into fridge magnets or even whiteboard magnets and I want to explain where the inspiration for this idea has come from. So when I was little, I used to stay at my Nana's during school holidays and sometimes after school too. I had parents that worked a lot and I feel I spent so much more time with my Nana than any other family member. She would always have Tim Tams in the fridge. So after school, we would go to her fridge and grab a single Tim Tam out. Her fridge was covered in magnets, each magnet a place, an object, an attraction of a location her kids had traveled to in their younger years. There was a cute little sheep from New Zealand, a bridge from the US, a tall tower from London, and so many scenic beaches from the various islands my aunties and uncles had traveled to. Her fridge actually weighed less than all the colorful bright magnets that covered it. I love this sentiment so much of having a mix match magnet covered fridge of memories and souvenirs. And I love the idea of it being a little image and place on your fridge. Something my Nana and I used to do was go through her large pile of bills and letters. We would cut out the little corners of the envelopes and soak them in water until the stamps raised themselves from the paper. Releasing the glue, I would use little tweezers and place the stamps on baking paper and place it between book pages. We would go through the previous week's books and place the stamps into a stamp book, matching up the designs with others of the same collection. I would marvel at the different art styles, drawings, illustrations and collections, and I would pick favorites. I love the kittens and puppies, but I hated the cricket player stamps so much. I would avoid those ones if I could. Sometimes we would even go to the antique store on school holidays and my Nana would let me pick out some stamps I wanted to add to my collection. <laughs> I wasn't a very good collector because I always wanted the pretty pictures instead of the ones that were actually worth money, but I had a lot of fun with the pics I got. As I got older, I still have my stamp book, but it doesn't have as many in there. 
I can't remember the last time I actually had an envelope arrive with a stamp on it. I wanted to make these little tiles into magnets for the fridge to commemorate my Nana's fridge, but also bring together my memory of collecting stamps with her. So it's like a two in one souvenir. I painted some little scenic pictures on them and added some different price points to reflect the increase of stamps over the years. Like they are part of their own stamps being collected on the fridge. And I figured I could do a whole series on different locations with these, but I've already done so many artworks this week. This was just to get a bit of the inspiration and concept behind the idea so I can work on a bigger project around this stamp idea later. But that is pretty much the concept for the stamps. When I was sort of thinking about the stamps, I was thinking about how sad it is that stamps are kind of fading away. And it's mostly due to text messages and internet and social media just being so easy to just flip people messages, whereas before you used to have to write a letter to stay in touch with people. But I just love the idea of being a, like a little picture you add to your letter to compliment what's inside or to compliment the person that you're sending to. It was just so cute. It's just like a little printed out sticky sticker. It's just a sticker. It's like an adult sticker. Now we just have these bland white stickers that had the price and where it was printed on them or a simple postage paid envelope. And I just feel like they're dying out. Even Australia Post is moving towards more affordable and cheap ways of creating postage stamps. And that makes me sad as something as personal and connected as writing a paper letter to someone. It just feels like it's not got as much personalization as it used to when you could pick out a colorful stamp and pop it on the corner. It also totally makes sense, but I just feel like in this day and age, like it's so nice that I've got these stamps. They sit in a book under my bed and they're there forever. Whereas a message that you send online, it just kind of fades away into the absence of the world. I don't know, maybe this is like an existential crisis thing or like a very deep philosophical questioning of my existence. I don't know, but it's just kind of sad that these messages are just floating in the air and stamps are fading out. Poor little stamps. I also just want to say if you've sent me a letter to my PO box in the past, I've absolutely kept your letters in my little folder, but I've also kept your envelopes when they've had cute little stamps on them as well. I love that I have a bunch of different stamps from all over the world now. I always try and send something back to you when you write me a letter too. So I'm just so grateful for that. I used to dream up making my own design series of stamps when I was collecting the stamps. Like I was just like, one day I'm going to design my own set of stamps and they're going to be collectible. But I guess I could still do that <laughs> but it's just kind of sad that that's not as popular as it was when I was younger. For these tiles I did do some big bold images on each one and I guess these could have been stamp designs too but the idea is kind of inspired by European tiles with images and motifs that make up a huge cluster of images so it feels like each person who gets one of these each has a part of a larger artwork. Yeah it's like these little images that comprise a big collage of images and they just look like a cluster of I don't know, I just had this visual of like different little pictures making a big tile background and even just like having a really cool kitchen splashback or tile work behind the counter that is just so warm, cozy, bright and just messy. Like I kind of just wanted it to feel so messy, like you don't even know which tile to look at but all together they look really groovy. The last design I did was a really quick smaller grid so it was a four tiles, so two by two. And I actually quickly rip, whipped this one up when I realized the files weren't working from the previous shots. And I was worried that I didn't have enough content to just like make the video all juicy, but I realized I actually did and it was all fine. But I was like, I've got this anyway, so let's just chuck it in. So I quickly whipped this up. I'm not the most proud of this one. I felt like I could have designed this better, but I was panicked and I was rushing and I was like, let's just quickly whip something up so that we've got content. And this one was inspired by the idea of like a Moroccan style tile and it's just got like this swirly floral but like pattern-esque the, the repeating pattern kind of aesthetic but also the fact that like sometimes the patterns can be a group of tiles that kind of connect together and look really cool I don't know I was just sort of playing around with that one when I glazed the pieces I made sure that I numbered each one of the tiles that were part of the grid so that when I popped it in the kiln the image all lined up because you can kind of see it just underneath the glaze but I felt like I was going to get it wrong even if I could see the image so I numbered all of them underneath so that it would line up so that you could get that really cool impact of opening the kiln and seeing the image just completed and then it was time to fire and open the kiln okie dokie my pottery artichokes let's have a look what is inside it's gonna be good 
I have full confidence it's going to be great. <laughs> that is so cool. I'm so excited. I can just see the meme tile because I've got the other shelf on top. I can just see it and it is popping and it looks so fantastic. Oh my goodness, don't they look great? I am so happy with every single one of these. I just, I just want to get that meme tile out so bad. I just want to pull the shelf off and see what it looks like. I love it. Oh, I love that so much. That was so worth it. Look at it. How cool is that? Oh my gosh. I'm so happy. That was absolutely worth it. I just popped them all together for a transition for a short video and it just, oh, it just looks so good. I'm so happy. It almost makes me want to go through the paint again and do another one. <laughs> Oh, that looks so cool. I just love that this could be behind a nice fireplace or an oven as a really cool, almost like Italian inspired splashback. Oh my gosh. I just want to do my whole kitchen in tiles now. Isn't that pretty? Oh, that's so cool as well. I'm just staring at it. I've got no coins. I'm just staring at how cool that is. I am absolutely obsessed with these. There was so much inspiration ideas for this humble little square, but gosh, I had a lot of fun and I hope you enjoyed the ideas I explored this week. As always, there are so many ideas I could have done, but I think it was a good snapshot of the potential each of these tiles could have. I loved all the individual images and how together they look like this amazing, huge artwork. I can only imagine a kitchen tile like this. It would be incredible, so cozy. I also played around with grouping them in different colors and rainbows. And for these, I tried to do a mix of objects, critters, fruits, vegetables, body parts, and flowers. So the images were all kind of random, but still consistent. I like that you could customize the images to suit your favorite things, your favorite colorways. It would be so fun and I loved it. And honestly, if I'm renovating my kitchen, I know how I'm doing it now. I wish I did a little bit better of the design in the four tile grid, but it was me thinking on my feet. And I mentioned before, I was just painting whatever to try and add some content when I thought I'd lost all my files this week. I like it because you get the idea of how the tiles could be designed and you get that sort of like Moroccan inspiration. For the images, I just really couldn't pick a favorite. Altogether, they just add so much. And I think I love the lemons. I love the little tomatoes. They were really cool. I did some Australian native flowers as well. But yeah, you could just go wild with all the different concepts and ideas. I just love the vibrancy of them. Oh, I just, I keep looking at them and every time you group different ones together, they look like a totally different artwork again, which is really cool. I love the stamps. They remind me of my Nana's magnet covered fridge. They are bright, colorful and whimsical. And I definitely want to do more of this style. And then uh, last but not least, my big grid pictures. Love. I just love them all. They both turned out so glorious. The meme image by Casey Green is incredible. It pops, it lines up, it looks like the image and you can tell the image, what the image is straight away. And I'm just so proud of myself and, and for persisting on that artwork. It was a long time getting that to come to life and I'm just so proud of it. And I just wanted to say one more thank you to Casey Green for allowing me to use their artwork in this week's video. I love that this could also be a cute coffee table puzzle or even a bigger set of four tiles could be a coaster set for guests very cool i just had so much fun and i hope you like all the ideas i explored as always don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this and here is your sneak peek to the next reveal i don't know if i can top this week but here's your sneak peek